my friends, Summer is here to play more Cinders! We are on part 4, I think, of the Grim Fate ending. Um, we are going on a tangent with Tobias. <laughs> and Cinders and Tobias really got it going in the, in the previous, previous part. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you don't miss that, because uh, we are gonna head right back into that um, situation, which is called Past Bedtime. <laughs> So, Cinders is currently at Tobias's place, and I can't believe she's actually gonna spend it overnight at his place. This is like very different from what I first saw when I was playing um, with, uh, I guess, the Captain Peralt kind of ending, where I totally ignored Tobias, so I had no idea this was what's going to happen. <laughs> now, all I need is some cheese or maybe honey. Let's see. It's a shame Tobias is so orderly. I can't find anything here. Is she gonna stumble across something while she's rooting around for a midnight snack? I never thought that finding food in a store can be this difficult. Oh, I'm starving. I feel like I spent entire night chopping wood. Girl, you just had a huge meal at the tavern, right? With Tobias before you went on like your small nighttime walk. Oh my god. Which, in a way, I did. Good thing Tobias is quite the lumberjack. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't think the game would go this far. Oh my god, I'm actually crying a little bit because I'm laughing so much. Okay, although his skills could use some improvement. Endurance is all fine, but you can't beat finesse. Cinders, I didn't expect you to be here. Hello, Tobias. Did you expect me to vanish in the early morning mists like a fairy in a dream? When I woke up and you were gone, the thought did cross my mind, yes. Except for the fairy part. Well, then you must learn one thing about this specimen of the little folk. I am starving. Oh, I see you found yourself something to eat already. There's some ham in the cabinet to your left, and you'll find some vegetables on the lower shelf to your right. Really, Tobias? Is there a method to this madness? Why can't you keep all the food in one place? Do you have any milk? Not yet, no. But the farmer should be here in about 15 minutes. He always comes before I open. I'll manage without milk then. Hmm, this is good. Wait, did you say 15 minutes? Yes, I did. I should open soon. I may be my own boss, but it only makes me drive myself harder. I told you before, this merchant business can be hard work. And yet, after all that hard work yesterday, you still managed to drive yourself some more last night. <laughs> when will the sex joke stop? <laughs> uh, yes, I did, didn't I? I'm quite pleased with my performance, actually, considering the hiatus. <laughs> oh my god, I'm actually crying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Merchant, you are quite efficient with your resources. Although, there are plenty of other factors you should take into account before giving yourself best marks for performance. Technique, focus, discipline, responsiveness, and above all, finesse. Oh, please continue. One can never improve without criticism, especially delivered in such a well-organized manner. You sound like you could write a book on the subject. Perhaps with more practice. Yes, you could use that too. That may be so, but the real question is, with whom should I practice? Yes, Cinders, I was just about to ask you about that. So what happens now? What role do I play in your book? We're, you're my lover, Tobias! <laughs> do you really have to ask? Isn't last night a bit self-explanatory? Oh no, nothing is self-explanatory when it comes to sleeping with other people. I'm sure you'll learn that soon enough. I need you to tell me where I stand. Obviously, you're very close to me, Tobias. That's why I stayed. I wanted to be with you. Because I'm your friend? Uh, yeah, totally. Friends with benefits, right? <laughs> no, because you're more than that. I see. I'm glad to hear this wasn't just a pastime to you. But what's next? Oh, the way I see it, the characters are still in the primary stage of their development, so it's too early to say what the next chapter will bring. But not too early to make the characters give up their self-control and spend a night filled with passion and lust? Well said, Mr. Poet. Cinders, listen to me. If this means something to you, if you have plans about me, just say it. I'm not expecting any theatrics. 
So don't feel forced to jump into my arms and shower me with kisses. I'd simply feel better knowing whether we start seeing each other on a regular basis. Don't worry, I wouldn't do something so dramatic anyway. I just want to know what's ahead of me. What are your plans, Cinders? Um, wait and see. I, I did hear that, um, this is kind of unrelated, but I did hear that there was a boarded dialogue, I think, where you have more of a scene with Sophia. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but I'm, I'm also very surprised there wasn't a fairy tale ending where you just move in with Tobias and like go to the town. Um, I feel like that could have been a, a potential potential path as well, but no such ending in this story, so we're going to wait and see. We're not going to escape with Tobias. My dear Tobias, I'd love to give you all the answers you need, but the way things are now, I'm not in any position to decide about anyone's future, including my own. It was lovely to forget about Carmosa for one evening, but here she comes, sneaking back into our conversation. Had she known about what had happened, about me giving up my jewel for you, do you think she'd approve? With me, a commoner? I'd imagine she'd die of two simultaneous strokes. Blood is not the crux of the problem I was thinking of, but sure, it does matter to her. You could say many things about Carmosa, few of which would be nice, but she certainly isn't one to change her mind easily, for better or worse. So, unless something happens, we can't be open about this. We can't risk her finding out. So we'll continue to meet in secret? I think we're being slowly drawn back into the fantasy realm, Cinders. Perhaps it sounded like that, but I don't really care. I know that Carmosa can't find out right now, but I also feel that something is going to happen. Something will change, and soon. Well, I certainly know what I'd love to have happen during our next meeting. <laughs> yes, I hope we'll see a happy ending to all of this. Sorry, Cinders! Sorry, Tobias! <laughs> Well, Cinders, you eat really fast. Are you in a hurry somewhere? I don't want my lovely sisters to notice that I spent the night in a room with no bars in the windows. But that means I have to get there before dawn. It may be impossible, but I have to try. I see. Would you like me to keep you company? Shield you from the wolves and such? With your muscular arms and mighty axe, Mr. Merchant? Oh, I get it. So now I'm Mr. Merchant again. What happened to the lumberjack? Oh my god. I feel used. Please don't. Besides, you have a store to open and I know the way back all too well. Like an object. A thing. Well then, you better get used to that feeling and learn to enjoy it because something tells me this wasn't our last night of mutual abuse. I certainly hope so. Take care, Cinders. Goodbye, Tobias. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Alright, back to the residence after a night on the town. <laughs> Ugh, I feel like a thief. And a good one, too. I think nobody noticed me climbing through the window. Now, if only I could manage to continue my skillful deception tomorrow, I bet I won't have to explain a thing. I need to sleep. Maybe they'll forget to wake me up at dawn. They ought to give me a break. I feel like I've just come back from the moon. On foot. <laughs> There's Gloria. Cinders, are you awake? I'm awake. I'll be right there. Oh, this was um Sophia in my playthrough. Do I have a slightly better relationship with Gloria compared to Sophia? I'll get to work in a minute. No, it's not about that. I just need to talk to you. Oh wait, no, this is um I think this is the same thing that I've seen before. If it is completely the same thing, I'll skip it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll keep going through this. <laughs> this is too good to skip. I just want to know Gloria. Alright? Cinders. I'm really sleeping or I need more sleep. <laughs> crying way more at this than I should be. <laughs> it's no wonder. You weren't here when I was going to sleep last night. You must have come home very late indeed. Perhaps I should ask you about your whereabouts. On the other hand, perhaps not. I shudder at the thought of your late night shenanigans. Just give me one moment to wake up. I'll be with you in a second, up and ready to receive your just anger. 
Listen, I realize we're never really on the best of terms, but what has been going on recently is something new indeed. If you really think that I will turn a blind eye on all of your childish, egoistic exploits, then you need to think again. What are you talking about, Gloria? I didn't do anything. Oh, you didn't do anything outright destructive. You are far too smart for that. But do you think I haven't noticed all the little jabs at me? You take every opportunity to undermine my efforts and make my life harder. Really, I don't know what's happening to you, Cinders. Do you think I'm stupid or that I don't have any feelings? I'm trying to understand you, I really am. But it seems like you are reveling in this chaos you're creating, as if you wanted things to fall apart. Despite the efforts of all those who want to keep things together. This is where we differ, Gloria. True, our relationship was never civil, but I think I'm beginning to understand why. We may be a family, but we are not alike. All I'm trying to do is survive in this madhouse as unscathed as possible. What seems like chaos to you is freedom for me. Besides, let's face it, Gloria, things are already broken. Only Carmosa and you are still pretending that you can glue them back together like some ugly heirloom everyone hates. Typical answer of an angry child. Do you even realize that you have managed to describe the house, all of us, as if it was all about you? It is such a shame that Mother taught me so well about the importance of family. It must have made me naive. Because I still have hope that you will mature one day. Excuse me, mature? Yes, become an adult, a person who is able to grasp a larger picture, go beyond one in one's own interests. Also, someone who can sacrifice personal happiness for the greater good of the house, if it is necessary. I don't deny that it can be difficult at times, but we are not children anymore. We must realize how we all depend on Carmosa and support her in any way we can. I see. Well, it certainly doesn't play well with my idea of maturity, especially that part about supporting Carmosa. Of course you would say that. Just like you, Mother can be a difficult person to get along with, I admit. But her intentions are good. Think about the way she is putting all her strength into giving us a good life. And if you still doubt her, try imagining our lives without her. Don't mind if I do. How long do you think this house would last with her gone? You must understand, she won't be here to care for us forever. And I can't do it alone, Cinders. I need your support. I'm gonna say, you're wrong, Gloria. My dear Gloria, I don't know what is more ironic. You talking about maturity or the fact that you actually believe in the things you're saying. Let me tell you something, my poor little drone. Maturity has nothing to do with reproducing a pattern you've been presented. Watch and repeat. That's a child's task. Maturity is independence. It is choosing the life you want for yourself and doing all you can to get it, despite the shadow of the great mother trying to block you from the sun. Oh, the terrible mother. How can she try to protect you, teach you how to live, and respect you to care for her legacy? Such, in such unjust cruelty. Maturity is also about being able to create your own relationships, no matter what she told you. We don't have to torture each other, you know? Just because Carmosa trained us to pick on ourselves so that we won't join forces and rebel against her doesn't mean we have to do it. Exactly. We waste all our potential to act responsibly and show Mother that we are adults on constant quarrels. We are not doing half the things that are expected of us, of any responsible person, really, and Carmosa is still giving us a chance. We are so childish. No, we are not. We are young women who just want to live normal lives without constant fear, frustration, and self-pity. It's absolutely normal that we aren't happy. Who would be? We want things to change, but we lack the means to make that happen. That's why we should rebel against Carmosa. We are more than capable of running this house on our own, and she knows it. Are you serious? Completely. But for that, we need to act together, cooperate and not waste our energy on making each other miserable with our little schemes. This picture you're painting in front of my eyes seems pleasant, but also not very realistic. It requires one thing which we do not have, mutual agreement. And we will not have that as long as we are not of one mind, that is, as long as Sophia keeps up her silly act. Gloria, I doubt that it is Sophia who we should be worrying about in this situation. I'm having trouble picturing her opposed to anything that would bring us more freedom from Carmosa. No, Gloria, it's you. You are the unknown in this equation. We can't be sure about your loyalties. Now this is something I didn't expect, you behaving just like Sophia. It would seem that you two have much more in common than meets the eye. You both prefer to spend your time criticizing me rather than trying to contribute. You could be helping me, helping us somehow. How can we understand each other if you do not even try? Sophia is just a poor broken creature composed of vile and self-pity, a pinnacle result of Carmosa's caring upbringing. 
But all in all, she is exactly that and nothing more, a product of the way this family works. She didn't just sprout out of the ground inherently bitter, you know? No, you and Carmosa forced her into this mold. You share responsibility for making her the little Miss Sunshine she is now. And where are you going with this? Am I to shower her with sentiment from now on? Why should I, considering the way she behaves towards me? Even if she was mistreated in the past, it is no reason to shut herself away from the world and bark at it from within her room like an angry dog. No, she made up her mind. She does not want me around her. I cannot change that, even if I think that is regrettable. I can't believe this is Gloria the Reasonable speaking now, the one who sees beyond her own selfish interest. If you do acknowledge the fact that you separated yourself from her in the past, why not try to force your way back? You can do this, Gloria. You can get your sister back. You just have to swallow your pride and try really hard. And so you recognize it as well. I am the most reasonable. And I am the only one around here that actually does anything to keep up the house. That might be just a bit of an overstatement, Gloria. Each one of us puts some work into how this place works, for better or worse. We just have different perspectives, and so we give a different kind of input, but... Surely you realize how naive that sounds. It is something one might say to a so child to spare its feelings. I have tried to help you both understand the importance of Carmosa's rules, and yet I seem to be the only one capable of understanding the requirements to keep a proper household. Will nobody ever learn? How long am I supposed to guide you and work alone against the laziness and stupidity of others? Hasn't it ever occurred to you that you might not have all the answers? Because that's the root of the problem, right there. You try to be our teacher or disciplinarian. You have no knowledge that we lack, nor a higher status. And you are not our mother. Stop trying to imitate Carmosa. Is this how you think a sister should act? How should I know? Do any of you act like one towards me? I'm going to fight back. <laughs> Why would we? You give us no reason for being friendly. And vice versa. All you do is whine and act irresponsibly. There is no logic in what you both do. Oh, and sneaking into my room in the morning so that nobody would see you talk to me is pure logic and no emotions. I came here to talk to you in private, to get us to understand each other and reason with you. That you did. And when I opened up and answered honestly, you strike where it may hurt. Do you really think assigning blame is going to solve anything? It is the same song all over again. Most reasonable, my ass. You need to calm down right now. Or what? Or nothing. I am trying to reach out to you, to talk to with you like a grown-up person. And there you go again, throwing a fit like an immature brat you sometimes are. Immature brat, and yet you see yourself an angel reaching out to me. I haven't managed to create even a little dent in that Carmosa pose you wear all the time. You really intend to become her, don't you? You want to be Carmosa's copy. What on earth do you mean? Gloria, would you please stop for a minute, for a second to think and answer one simple question truthfully? And what question might that be? What do you like to do? I... And no, I don't mean something that you feel obliged to do. Not a chore, necessity, or an assignment. What do you like to do? What makes you happy? What do you do just for yourself and nobody else? But what are your goals? Where do you see yourself in the future? What will you do when Carmosa's not here and you're able to move on? Where do you want to go? I, I do not know. I just want to make everything better. This house should work as intended and it should do so because of me. I want to make everyone happy and keep it all together. Fine. And when you accomplish that, what then? Imagine the house is running smoothly. Carmosa is proud of you and relaxed. All tasks complete. What would you do with all your free time then? I do not know what to say. Indeed, such a situation seems highly unlikely to occur, so I have not given it any thought. I... Who are you? What do you know about yourself? I... I do not know... I do not know why you're so mean to me. All I did was come here with an open mind to talk to you and find some mutual understanding. You get no understanding because there's nothing there to understand. You came here to reenact Carmosa in a statement of superiority. That is not true. I did indeed try to get through to you. You simply would not listen. You didn't either. Get through to me? You came here with your air of superiority to boost your own conviction. You don't care about myself or Sophia. All you care about is you. This is pointless. I see no reason to listen to such nonsense. Especially since I did nothing to deserve such treatment from an immature brat. Both of you are trying to turn everybody against you. Then you will be able to whine about fate that brought you to living in cinders and pain. 
I must have had some kind of huge lapse of judgment to even consider treating you as a mature woman. Oh, look who's talking. Do you even understand the word mature, or is it just something you repeat after Carmosa? Fine, Cinders. Get out. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. You have one more day until Carmosa returns. And I will not stoop to debating the order of things with you any further, nor try to teach you. You can go and do as you please for today. We'll see where your freedom gets you. Oh, <laughs> you both know. We both know you are powerless to stop me from leaving the house. Or from doing anything for that matter. So you can stop pretending. Or did you grow accustomed to pretending too much? Pretending to have control, to be self-confident, to be Carmosa? I do not have to listen to this. Goodbye. Oh my god. My like heart is going because I like was getting so worked up being both Gloria and Cinders. Oh my gosh. Alright, we got a little bit more to go. We'll see how Sophia treats me in this hall now that we're uh, enemies. Hello there, Hall. Let's see what new surprises you have in store for me today. Because I have to warn you, after the conversation I just had, I'm hard to impress. Hello there, early bird. Only old surprises, apparently. You really should try harder next time, Hall. Having a conversation with a room, how bizarrely refreshing. It's good to see you too, Sophia. Now, I never thought I'd say something like this, but here it goes. Carmosa was right, too much reading does make you crazy. But evidently, it also makes you interesting. At least interesting enough to make my eternally uptight sister sneak into your room when she thought I wasn't looking. I seriously doubt she's that naive. Doesn't matter. The real question is, what did she want from you? Did she come to ask for help? So many hours without the chance to struggle for Carmoso's approval must have let the poor girl quite disturbed. Oh, you know our Gloria, a true stronghold of independence, a font of wisdom. I take it she came to spread her usual Carmosian propaganda among the little ones. Only to meet with steadfast resistance of the people. We shall not be silenced, shall the crowds? Oh my, it must have been quite the display. Did the guard intervene? If you're asking if there was any violence, then yes. Plenty. The streets and squares practically turned red. Oh, how lovely. Was she hurt? Did you slap her? Um, no. I think that would have been going a bit too far, don't you think? My dear, simple sister, who can really say? Such things tend to be relative, you know. A one man's hero is a criminal to someone else. It is simply too complex for a girl like me to decide. So when it comes to Gloria, I don't analyze and stick to the golden rule. Violence is always the answer. I see. I think you've just given me a bit too much information there, Sophia. Oh, you're such a child sometimes. In case you didn't notice, we're living in the middle of a dangerous and unforgiving forest. This place is packed with wild, bloodthirsty predators. And whether we choose to see them or not, they exist. What a lovely thought. I will think about it on my trip through the woods today. Oh, you're going out again. I have to eat something first, but yes, I am going out. Why? Oh, I was just wondering what do you actually do when you go out, considering you have no money or friends to speak of. And noticing how much time those little trips to the town can sometimes take you, I couldn't help but think that, oh, it's silly. I know that I'm going to regret it, but all right, I'll play along. What were you thinking about? Excuse me for being so bold, but do you by any chance go to town to work? To do what? Oh, you know, to make coin, independently. You are incredible. Thank you, dear sister. Remember that there's no shame in that line of work, Cinders. They say it's the oldest trade in the world. I am going now. It must be hard, I know. Apart from the axe, there's still the matter of bribing the guards, finding clients. If there is someone I need to find, it's people I can talk to who aren't, you know, dead inside. You can always speak to inanimate objects and rooms should you fail to find any living soul interested in what you have to say. Go to hell. I will be praying for you, dear sister. Wow! That was really harsh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna go to town. I believe we're gonna go see Tobias again, but uh, we'll see. <sighs> Another day of freedom I can spend on the town. There's always something going on here. 
Even now I see some commotion in the street. I wonder what it is about. Oh, this is the townswoman with Madame Guide. Um, I wonder if the conversation is going to be different since I'm not actually friends with Perrault. Okay, so we just saw the scene with the townswoman, Madame Guide, and then Perrault coming in. Um, I actually had the same dialogue with Perrault where he was quite friendly towards me, so I was kind of surprised by that. But with that, Cinders is uh, thinking about what to do after that show. So especially after last night, I guess I could drop by and see how he's doing. Just an innocent meetup of two old friends. You, you are not going to swoosh booties in the middle of the day, Cinders. Tobias has to work, okay? <laughs> hmm. I could also spend some time in the tavern, chatting with townspeople, making friends, and hearing all the gossip. That is where the life of the town concentrates. And the captain said he was headed there. Speaking to him proved to be worthwhile so far. Choices, choices. Watch out, Cinders, or you may get used to it. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and stop now. So this has been part four, I think, of the Grim Fate playthrough of Cinders. I hope you've had a good time watching this so far. It certainly surprised me <laughs> very much compared to the other playthroughs I've gotten. It's gotten a lot more scandalous in this playthrough, <laughs> like with Tobias and then also Sophia making her suggestions. Um, definitely didn't expect that, but... Anyway, I'll continue next time. I hope you have a great day. Remember to be kind to yourself and to others. Goodbye!